GameStop's stock price soared to $325 a share on Friday, capping off its tumultuous week on Wall Street. Despite the video game retailer's success, the overall market sank, ending the week in the red. The ongoing battle started with a group of independent investors buying shares of GameStop, driving up its share price. The group coordinated its effort on Reddit. Large-scale investors who shorted the company's stock lost billions of dollars as a result. Earlier in the week, the free trading app Robinhood issued a temporary freeze on the trading of GameStop shares. Potential investors and lawmakers slammed that move, and on Friday, Robinhood reversed course, allowing limited purchasing of the stock to resume. The dispute between smaller day traders and hedge fund investors is escalating, though. Some experts call the growing conflict a revolution against the establishment, and they believe this is just the beginning. For more, let's bring in CEO and founder of Tusk Ventures, Bradley Tusk. He is also the host of the Firewall podcast and author of The Fixer, My Adventures Saving Startups from Death by Politics. Bradley, great to have you on the show. So let's yeah, get right into it. GameStop is getting a, a lot of attention right now. Will this actually change the way that Wall Street operates, or is all this really being blown out of proportion? No, it, it, it really could. Um, and in a way, it might be the first really effective countermeasure to the institutional power that a lot of Wall Street banks have. Um, you know, personally, I don't even buy stocks because I feel like I don't have any kind of information advantage. And as a result, it's just no different than playing the lottery or gambling. You know, my day job is as a venture capitalist. But when I invest in a tech startup, I meet the founders. Uh, I do reference checks. I go through their business plan with a fine tooth comb. And then I'm actively involved in building the company. I understand how in those conditions it makes sense to, to, to invest money. But if you're just sort of throwing darts at a board, to me at least, it makes no sense. And this may be the first time that individual retail investors were able to band together and come up with a strategy that was pretty logical. Well, in, in many ways, it seems like these small investors were rallying around a company that they fundamentally liked uh, and were trying to stick it to these big hedge funds and, uh, and those that were shorting the stock, predicting the death of GameStop. But what happens after these investors ultimately sell off their stock? This meteoric rise isn't expected to continue. It's, it's sending a message, certainly, to investors, um, the, the career investors, many of whom have lost millions of dollars in the process. But ultimately, what comes next? Yeah, I think you're going to see a very pitched battle in Washington uh, on both sides. So on one side, uh, you're going to see hedge funds and other institutional investors who are saying, this is terrifying. We need to put a stop to this. And they'll try to come up with regulations that don't look that bad, but ultimately really limit the ability uh, for another GameStop to happen. And on the other side, we've already seen people on the left like AOC and people on the right like Ted Cruz calling for hearings to investigate uh, why Robinhood stopped trading and why they prevented their customers from having the opportunity to benefit from this. And so you're going to have really competing regulatory and legislative agendas happening in Washington at the same time. And it'll be a really good test to show, you know, what the Biden Washington is all about. Well, along that same line, I'm, I'm wondering what this means for the future of the stock market. If large groups of people realize that they can manipulate the success of an individual stock um, using social media, and should we see new regulations put in place in the future, or does this actually sort of level the playing field yeah. for the ordinary <laughs> investor? Yeah, look, you know, when high-frequency traders are using really, really sophisticated algor algorithms, when they're installing, you know, certain types of, of lines to transmit data at, you know, fractions of a millisecond faster so that they could get an advantage on the trade, you know, now that regular people have a way that they can do something that benefits them, I, I don't see what the problem really is. So um, my hope is that, you know, this is something now that if you're going to short a stock and you're an institutional investor, you're a hedge fund, you have to be aware that, look, this could really backfire on you um, and you have to be thoughtful about it. And, you know, one thing might be, like you said earlier, GameStop is a company that a lot of individual small investors, especially those who are really digitally active, maybe people who also trade cryptocurrency, uh, have strong personal feelings about. You know, my kids were excited about this because they're 14 and 12, and to them, they love GameStop. They think it's a great place. So they were just happy to see it happen. So if you're going to start shorting stocks and you're a hedge fund, uh, you'll probably do a little more research than you did before. 
also another narrative, and that's this David and Goliath story that we've uh, started to hear um, the common thread in lots of different aspects of our society. So, who has the power in this battle now, as the situation evolves and the rules become more complex? Should we assume that the market will always be stacked against the amateur investor, or are the tables actually beginning to turn in their favor? So, right now, they're beginning to turn. And for as long as um, it is, remains legal for people to be able to, over social media, say, we are all going to drive the value of this stock up, and people have access to buy and sell that stock, um, they all of a sudden have leveled the playing field to some extent. But we already saw Robinhood stop trading once. They may pay a steep price for that, both from a regulatory standpoint and ultimately when they go public. Um, but, you know, if, if this is allowed to continue, then I think you know, individual investors have a chance to kind of have their own way to, to gain an advantage um, if the banks and the hedge funds find a way to ban this, and I suspect they're trying right now, uh, then all of a sudden it's business as usual and the deck is stacked against the little guy. All right. Bradley Tusk, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.